Hey, what's good guys? It's your boy G Marcus TV back with a brand new video Please like comment and subscribe and of course I'll be doing an episode recap and review of power book Raising Canaan the season finale The thing that's so crazy about this episode it leaked like three four days early So I seen the episode a couple of hours before it came out. I was like, oh sh it was the whole episode. I think 50 might have had something to do with it. Cause 50 just got out of a stars deal. So maybe it was 50 that leaked it. So you guys know how we do on this channel. I do a recap and I do a review at the end of the recap. So let's get straight to it. So it starts off with Marvin. He finds crackhead Sam. Of course, as you guys know from the last episode, he gave him some money to go away because of course he was trying to get rid of loose ends. And he told Sam, if I see you again, I gotta lay you down. So Marvin sees him at a crack house. He says, yo, I told you to go. Like you fed up. So he just says, yo, let me just tell you my backstory. He tells his backstory, which is he used to be a bank accountant and everything just went to shit. After that, he just tells Marvin, can I get one last hit? He just wanted him one last hit of the crack pipe. He made him get his last hit. Then after that, Marvin ended up shooting him two times, laying his ass out. So, of course, later on, Burke finds the body, and she is tight as hell because that was the witness. That was the lead. That was the one that was giving her the information that she needed. So, she's really tight. Detective Howard just looks at her like, yo, like, what the f Stay out of the way. Remember, he's giving her hundreds and hundreds of warnings. So Unique and Rock, they have they have like a little lunch type of date. It's kind of weird. Unique tells Rock, yo, the Italians is coming for you. Basically, watch out. Like he gives her that heads up, he gives her that warning. So Rock, then after that, you know, she says basically, you know, good looking on the warning. When she does her expansion, she wants him to expand also with her. Cause of course, you know, right now he has his own territory in New Jersey. So she's trying to throw him a bone and he's just on some like, you know what? Nah, I'm good. I already got what I got going. So of course, Rock speaks to Lulu and Marvin, lets them know what's going on, and lets them know that, yo, they have to hit the Italians, they gotta make these guys bleed. So Sal now, he goes to the guy that he's been talking about, where he has to go to him to get permission. This guy is the new character on the show. Tony Danza plays this role, and the guy's name is Stefano. He seems to be like a big, big boss type of mother. So he just basically tells him like, yo, they about to spill some blood, you know, there's a whole bunch of shit going on, they got to do it. So Stefano, he just basically tells him like, listen, I don't want nothing to do with this shit. I don't want nothing to do with these moolies. Take care of this shit. take care of it quietly and keep it moving. So now Rock, Lulu, and Marvin, they all do a drive-by for the Italians and they wet the whole freaking block up. Some of them got hit, some of them died. They shot the whole strip up it was crazy of course your boy sal did not get hit so now it comes to jukebox jukebox sees the guy that was trying to get her number that was trying to get with her during church it turns out that this guy was faking the whole thing he wasn't necessarily interested in jukebox it was more of a setup to see does she like guys like the mom basically sent him to bag jukebox up to see what's really going on so she approaches the guy and she whips this guy's Jukebox got some hands. Like she let his ass have it. He, she even stomped his ass out. Like he tried to swing, but nah, he missed all the swings and she whipped his. Ass. After that, the cops ended up arresting Jukebox. And the thing that's so crazy about this scene was, it's like she didn't give a f that she was getting arrested. So later on, her guardian angel Burke gets her out of prison. So she's basically just looking at her like, yo. I just helped you out. I'm always saving you. Yo, help me out. Give me the lead. It is Detective Howard's Kanan's father. So, of course, Jukebox does not say anything. But she does tell her, like, listen, the people you think got your back don't got your back. Basically telling her, like, yo, Detective Howard is setting you up. Which really has her puzzled. After that, Jukebox goes to the Cole's dad, which is her ex-girlfriend that died, and she just let him know, like, listen, it was not Detective Burt that gave her the rocks that made her die. She got the rocks from my purse by accident, and that's how she died. So the dad does not want to believe the shit. He's like, no, it's okay, they're trying to guilt you, it's not it. She told her straight up, listen, I cannot lie on this cop. Like, she actually had a heart for Detective Burt, but he's just in shock, he cannot believe it. So Lou gets some mail that shows that he has more money in his account for Bulletproof Records. So he's just like, what the f*** is this? Where is this coming from? Same time, Ziza gives him a beat that she created by herself. Which was a nice homage to Mary J. Blige's real love. 
but she's showing that yeah i can sing i can write and i can make beats so after that lou goes to find nolly like well what the hell happened where this money coming from and he finds out that rock took crown state because of course crown died and of course if you guys don't remember in the last season, I think it was, Crown was offering a rock his percentage just to get Lou's ass back on the streets and out the record label. So he finds that out, and of course, he is pissed off. So now Lou confronts Rock in the brand new house that she just got, and he is really tight. And he's just like, yo, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. I was there for you for Cartier. I was there for you. And I took out Kane, this homeboy. Like, why would you do this? Like, he's really, really hot and pissed off. So before she digs into his. She lets him know that, hey, killing Scrappy was a mistake. He was not the snitch. It was actually his mom. So Lou, of course, he's even more upset. Like, damn, you killed this for nothing. So then Rod just tells him, like, yo, I owned you. Like, yo, like, everything you got, I owned you. I done sold your ass over a hundred times. Like, she was really talking that shit. She even grabbed Lou's face. Like, I'm like, damn. You could tell it made him feel like a little Made him feel like a piece of shit. So Kanan tell Famous that they're about to work the corners. So he ends up going to the projects. That's where all the drugs are. That's where all the money is. And he takes some drugs. So Marvis is looking at him like, yo, what the f are you doing? Like, I'm going to tell Rock. And he was like, he doesn't give a shit. Kanan was also real. Like, yo, do what you got to do. Y'all is my shit. So after that, him and Famous, they start hitting the corners, selling the crack. You're just like, wow. Like, he moved pretty fast. So after that, Burke scooped him up, which was like, oh, shit. So you're thinking that she's basically scooping him up because she sees him selling the crack. No, what she does is she put the handcuffs on him, takes him to the park where he killed the detective, Basley Park to be exact. Takes him there and questions him. She just says like, yo, your mom was an informant when she was young. So Kanan's just not believing that. He's just looking at her like, you gotta be kidding me. Like you're really crossing the line now. My mom was not no snitch. So she's basically saying everything that she knows about the whole Rock and Detective Howard situation. And he's just not with it. He's not buying it. She wants him to admit that, yeah, that's his father. But of course, Kanan ain't saying shit. So what she ends up doing is she tries to actually arrest him. Puts him against the gate. He actually fights her. Like he pushes her down and then he runs for his life. She just looked at him and she was just like, yo, you done fucked up now. And then he did. You pushed the cop? You assaulted the cop? Not really a good look. So after that, he goes straight to Detective Howard and let him know what happened. Of course, he's pissed off. So he just says like, hey, we all got to sit down and talk, which is him, Rock, and which is Kanan, Rock, and him. They really got to put the story together and make sure the story is straight. So now, Rock goes to Cartier's boys, the guys that she got out of jail that Cartier did not want to get out. So she goes to them. She's all happy and with Marvin, you think that they, you know, they're about to make seal the deal or whatever, but they told her straight up, nah, we don't need you. So she's like, what? The way her face drops, the way it changed was hilarious. It drops, she goes, like, what are you talking about? I took care of Cartier, like, what's up? And they're just like, it doesn't make any sense to go to the middleman. Basically, we're trying to cut the middleman. Like, you know, like, we don't need you. You good, you took him out, so we're good to go. So what he ended up doing was he ended up going to Juliana. That Rock worked with. That's the one where she killed her husband after the was being hot. She basically stole those guys away from Rock, which was crazy. So Rock, she's pissed off. She's hot. She goes to Juliana and she goes to Joaquin, the other drug lord, and basically confronts him like, yo, what? Why would you do that? And she just goes like, hey, it is what it is. Like, you know, she basically stole them up. So Rock was like, yo, you playing a dangerous game. And Juliana was just like, yo, I'm dangerous too. So now Marvin, he's paranoid as He goes home to take a nap because, of course, he's stressed out. Everything that's going on, the man is stressed. He goes to take a little quick nap on the sofa. He hears something. So he goes. He's paranoid as hell. It turns out that it's jukebox. So they had a like, nice little small little conversation. So now Lulu goes back to the studio where he's packing up all his shit. So Ziza is there and he's just like, yo, I'm not with this no more. She could have this. I'm not doing this no more. This place can burn in hell for all I care. Next thing you know, two of the Italians came in and they started opening fire. They started shooting up the whole damn studio. But the saddest thing about this is Ziza got hit. 
Damn. You mean to tell me that Cartier and his knees died like back to back like that? Shh. As that's going on, Lulu ends up killing two of the hitmen that was shooting up the studio. So now your boy Sal, he puts on a fire, fire old school song on by the Slippers and it was dope. He puffs on his cigar and as he's playing the song and he's dancing to it, a whole bunch of is going down. The Italians hit up Unique Spot in New Jersey and they shot that mother up. Of course, Unique, he's firing back some shots, like he's catching some people, but they're mostly killing his people. So who gets hit? Your boy Rorel gets hit. And I was just like, I forgot this existed, so <laughs> I didn't really give a fuck about him, but he ends up getting hit, he ends up dying. Our boy, my favorite character on the show, Unique, he survives the shootout. After that, the Italians hit up the projects. That's where they keep all the drugs and all the stash. They hit that up and Marvin, he gets some of his soldiers inside of a room. He tries to get them away from all the gunfire, but the Italians is hitting the shit. It's like New Jack City. If you guys know what I'm talking about, comment down below. They shooting up. Marvin's on his Rambo with a big ass gun, killing people, shooting people, but he ends up getting shot in the stomach. Not my boy Marvin. Can you think he's about to die? And he is going, he's like running for his life basically. Like he's trying to get out of there in one piece. He's trying to open the door, they won't let him in. So I'm thinking that he's about to get popped. Nope, the guy in the beginning of the season that he helped out to get in the elevator that's in the wheelchair ends up helping Marvin out, brings him into his apartment. And that's how Marvin got away. I was like, wow. I thought that man was dead. I thought Marvin was done. Now Rock is at home by herself and she got bodyguards outside, of course, in the car. Jubox mom comes through. She comes through to ask for advice on how to deal with the Jubox situation. So Rock goes like, hey, how the hell they let you come up here like that? Where my bodyguards at? So Rock went to go check and the bodyguards were dead as a mother. Next thing you know, shots fired. The Italians came for Rock. Jubox mom get hit. She gets hit and dies. So two Italians come in, which I find to be kind of funny. They send like two like to the small places. That they should have sent at least five or six. Two of them come in, Rock hits one, and then the other guy shoots Rock in the shoulder. So he's talking a whole bunch of and Rock's just like, yo, do what you came to do. The guy gets shot from behind. Who was the person that shot him from behind? You guessed it. Our favorite character, Unique. You think Unique is gonna kill Rock? Nope. He goes to her slowly, he stands his hand out, picks her up, and he helps her out of the house. He said, South Side. Basically, we are all one. So they go outside, same time Kanan and Detective Howard. They come into the house, they see them coming outside, and that's how the season finale ended. This was definitely a great season finale. I would give it an 8.5. I love the fact that things were very unpredictable. The fact that only the innocent people died and Rot didn't die, Marvin didn't die, Lou didn't die. I was just like, wow. I love the acting. The acting was so good on everybody's part. I really thought Marvin was gonna die. The way Marvin did that scene, like, yo, loved it. But the shootout was real crazy. I loved it, loved it, loved it. This was a really, really great episode. I'm just mad none of the major characters died. Like, that's, that's my only beef with this. Like, they could've, even though I love Marvin, they could've killed Marvin off. So guys, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe as I'm bringing you videos every single week. Kanan, Raising Kanan is over until next year, but of course, you know, we got, we got the BMF coming, we got other shows coming, so make sure you guys stay tuned. It's your boy, G Marcus TV. Love you guys. Thank you guys. Signing off. Got it. That's a wrap.